Hi, everyone. Thank you for join joining. Um, we are currently live with our guest speaker, Kevin Buckingham, CEO of OXO. Hey, Kevin, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you doing, Paul? Good. Thank you. So That's awesome crazy. having you here. Uh, today, Kevin will be guiding you through some hiring tactics for startups in today's economic landscape. I put a poll in the chat just to better gauge um, who our audience is today. Are you employed at a startup? Are you wanting to join one? Or are you just here uh, to listen in and get out of work for a little while? Uh, so near the end of today's webinar, we will have Paola, account executive here at Factorial, who will be presenting a little brief demo on Factorial's applicant tracking system. Hi, Paola. Hi, lovely to meet everyone. And hi, Kevin. Hi, Pauline. Hey. All right. So before we dive in, uh, Kevin, next slide, please. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll give you a quick little overview of Factorial and who we are. So we're an HR software company and we're focused on empowering people, teams to streamline various aspects of their work. So from time and attendance to applicant tracking, performance reviews, and so much more. Um, so our goal is to provide these HR professionals with the time they need to focus on what truly matters. It's their people, um, essentially. So we will share a slide at the end of the webinar again uh, for you to scan it if you didn't get a chance to scan the QR code now. All right, so that being said, uh, Kevin, you wanna take it from here? Yes, of course. So hello everyone, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, so as for, um, as you mentioned, my name is Kevin. Uh, so I'm one of the co-founders of Oxo Recruitment. Uh, we're a boutique agency dedicated to assisting tech startup in finding the perfect people to drive their growth and success. Um, so at Oxo, our vision is to become like a one-stop shop for startup that they're seeking to grow basically. So of course we decided to begin with recruitment because uh, it aligns with our background, uh, but also in 2020, when we started the business, uh, the demand for recruitment services was, was just so huge. Um, and there's two significant reasons that led us to start OXO. Uh, first is we wanted to challenge the negative reputation that recruiters often bear in the market, uh, where people are feeling most of the time like numbers or push into processes that uh, they were not too inter interested in or um, that they felt like it might not be a fit. And second, because we felt like the startup uh, market wasn't well served, or at least correctly understood, right? Startups are a unique breed that demands a lot of patience, passions, and unwavering, unwavering uh, commitment to coaching. Um, and you need to have that kind of approach to help them grow. Um, so I, like, I'm a huge like diehard advocate for both candidates and companies alike. And our focus extends beyond just trying to fill position. Uh, it's about fostering growth in, in, for individual uh, and businesses alike. Um, our primary goal is to make a positive impact on both fronts so our clients and our candidates can feel like they are collaborating with not only like an external recruiter, but an extension of the team of our clients, right? And that's how we love to do to work because we're adding a little more plus value in the market. Um, what we love about, and what we love about recruitment, especially at OXO is that recruitment is really easy, but it's really, really, really hard. Uh, there's no formal degree in recruitment, only a handful of training and being able to understand the basic isn't challenging. However, um, recruitment requires a, a diverse skill set the ability to navigate various challenges and soft skills to handle the ups and downs of the process. Also, uh, you need to understand that recruitment is a people business. And for us at OXO, putting people first is at the core of the, the way we like to approach things, right? Um, that's why we're seeing recruitment as an art. Uh, for us, recruitment involves way more than just conducting, conducting interviews uh, and managing onboarding. It's a mix of strategies that are particularly relevant for especially for 2020, 2030, uh, third, uh, today's landscape. Uh, so thank you for being here today. I'm excited to delve in deeper into some recruitment strategies that I believe are good for startups in 2023. Um, so let's, di let's delve into the why behind today's webinar topic, hiring strategy for startup in 2023. So the strategy I'll be uh, sharing are aimed to at helping startups ensure success, not only in the upcoming month, 
but also when the market rebounds and that there's a need for high growth, right? So the strategy we'll discuss are designed to help equip startups with the tools and knowledge they need to navigate the present challenges and proactively prepare for the future. Uh, in my opinion, by implementing these strategies, startup can lay the foundation for sustained growth. So um, before we delve into uh, the strategies, I think it's essential to gain a clear understanding of the current startup landscape and its impact on the recruitment. Uh, and doubtfully, we found ourselves amidst the tech bubble, uh, a challenging reality that we start to like, start to unfold since Q3, Q4 last year. Uh, everybody probably remember each morning the news of like fresh rounds of layoffs seems to uh, seems to greet us on LinkedIn. Um, for small startups and most of our clients. Um, that were striving to expand, stick to investment, and hire the right talent, it was really, really daunting, and there was a lot of stress about it. Um, Silicon Valley Bank shutting down has also had a big impact that scared a lot of startups and nearly stopped everything recruitment for smaller companies. Uh, so startups have, have been forced to kind of adapt swiftly to a shifting environment, uh, and they transition from a stand in the market with tons of like VC investment to a company's market where there's less, less investment and people, companies are, are hiring a little less. Um, this shift, shift has brought uh, amongst applicants an increased difficulty in this, uh, an, an increased level of competition, sorry, uh, because there's so many more applicants per role right now because a lot of people, unfortunately, have got laid off. Um, and it, it, it also brought a, a really big difficulty in decision making for startups because with more applicants, you don't even know, like you don't always know the best choice for a company. Uh, and because of that, many startups has also fallen into the trap of over comparing candidates, um, which was one of the problems also when you're trying to hire people. So with all the noise on the market and the current economic uh, nightmare, unless you're in AI, uh, startup needs to have a lean and mean approach this year, uh, meaning that they need to prove and show uh, that they, have, they can handle the current situation and that they can come up with a strong, um, come strong from that situation to secure some round of investment in 2024. So of course, um, it, would be a, it wouldn't be a 2023 webinar uh, if we were not talking about AI. So AI is having a huge impact right now on the, on, on the market. Uh, I believe a positive one, but also it makes it harder for startups that are looking for a round of investment to compete against companies that are building AI. Um, remote work is also impacting a lot of startups in a positive way, I believe, because there's no more borders. Um, and you can have access to amazing talents, but as mentioned, it brings more competition between candidates and it doesn't help startups make decisions on who to hire. And lastly, it's important to understand that, yes, what's happening right now uh, might feel like, like a state of emergency. Uh, and the first reflex would be to shut down everything recruitment. Um, but it's crucial to know that we should see this as a state of adaptation and that we should keep building internal we should keep building internal best practices uh, in recruitment to ensure the success of the company in the next years. Um, so I have four strategies that I, I want to share with you today um, that will help you have a, a solid recruitment structure. Uh, first is to have a change of perspective about what is recruitment, which is really important because to understand on, on how to leverage your talent acquisition team. Second is to prioritize training for quality over quantity, uh, especially in a market like we're in right now. Um, third is to work on your recruitment marketing and try to understand what candidates really want to know and to be told. And lastly, uh, the way we use technology will make a huge difference in the long run. So let's start with my favorite, uh, favorite strategy that I had I had the chance to talk with a lot of companies, a lot of startups. It's understanding that recruitment isn't part of HR anymore. Uh, it's a sales buyer influencer team. Uh, and we need to approach that team this way to ensure that we can build a winning team, right? So as a sales team, your recruitment team also needs to be working with product marketing in HR. Um, they need to have monthly or at least quarterly meetings with cross-functional teams to first share valuable insights about what's happening uh, in the market, but also to understand more about how to talk to candidates, how to calibrate how they pitch, what they pitch and how they pitch to a candidate, the company, and how, how, also how to market themselves 
uh, the right way to ensure that you can create good relationship with uh, the candidates. Um, recruitment also needs to be more and more present at the, at the discussion table. So be, having basically a seat at the table, uh, especially in a market where investment are harder to receive, having someone that is able to share information about salaries, technology, et cetera, is crucial to ensure a healthy preparation for the growth, but also it helps to have a team that is always present in the market. Um, so also having a, so having a team that is proactive is crucial. It's not because there's no investment that we shouldn't be recruiting. So recruitment is not just when you need someone right away, someone to apply to your role and you need to onboard them. It starts with, starts with networking, maybe even let's say two years before hiring, right? Uh, before, uh, so you need to push your team to keep constant proactive pipeline and it will help you hire fast and smartly in the future. And to give a quick example um, about, Three months ago, I placed a candidate who I collaborated with uh, for nearly, I think, two years. Uh, I always kept a good relationship with him. Uh, it was just really, all, it was just wasn't the right time or the right fit at the moment. And three months ago, I had the perfect opportunity for him. My client opened the role, and I only had to submit one candidate, right? Because building the relationship, it makes that you understand your candidate but you also understand your clients and you just having the kind of mentality all, all along. Um, so having a team that is proactive is all is really what need, it's needed uh, to, to understand the markets that are coming. And um, that's the main difference that we see as an agency when we talk with our client is that we're constantly in the market talking with different clients, different companies, different uh, uh, candidates. Um, and if we were able to implement that kind of strategy internally, it would have a really, really big impact uh, for your recruitment. Um, your team needs to all the time create strong relationship and keep candidate engaged and interested about what is happening in your company and how it is to work at your company. Um, my next yeah, strategy- just, just to step in uh, based on your last point, um, yeah. from a marketing standpoint, from a marketing perspective yeah. as a social media specialist, um, by showcasing work culture, especially in the initial stages of recruitment to really like show our candidates what our whole brand is about it really shows a level of transparency and authenticity um, that can attract job seekers to who align with our values um, it fosters this sense of connection um, and so you know considering for example we're a people first company um, we put a huge emphasis on employee stories team activities um, and what we stand for um, you know dog content as well we are a pet friendly office um, mm -hmm. and you may have seen a few of our ping pong tables and yoga balls um, and some some work events that turn into parties especially here in the Barcelona headquarter um, mm -hmm. yeah those are just like a few incentives that you can post on your socials that, that do great and are really successful into attracting um, some new candidates yeah, definitely. And I feel like it shows how transparent you are as well, right? It's, it's, it, it tells a lot about a company and, and how the company operates. So definitely sharing that is a good thing. Um, so the next strategy, and I, I, I think that's a big one, um, is to start training your team for quality over quantity. So that's me, mostly what's made the big difference with us at OXO working with startup is that it wasn't about volume and trying to present tons of candidates wishing will be placing one at the, end, at the end of the month. It's about understanding what the hiring manager is looking for and being able to challenge if it's, nece if it's necessary to find the perfect fit, right? So taking the time to train your team uh, on the product you're developing, the environment in which you are developing it, uh, the skills needed for the role, whether they're technical or, or soft skills, uh, will help a lot. And we've seen the result with our KPIs internally. Uh, your goal should be to have a team of recruiters that can help you decide the persona. Again, as I said, right, having a, 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 a place at the table um, and trying to build the person that your team needs and not just a team of recruiters that will do as you, are, you ask for as an area manager and who always, was always, try, who always only gonna try to, um, to look for what you're thinking or you're looking for or that you think that could be a good fit for your team. Uh, and this one is really crucial. I've mentioned it. We saw a, a, a really big impact on our KPIs, but uh, use KPIs as much as possible and use it the right way, for the right reason. 
Um, KPI shouldn't be, shouldn't be punitive. And unfortunately, in recruitment, they are mostly used uh, that way. I've interviewed uh, tons of recruiters to work with us at OXO. And most of the time, uh, when we talked about KPIs, it was always kind of stressful, right? Um, so it was always kind of stress, stressful uh, because it determined your performance and uh, your perform performance, and that's how companies know if you're good or not. Instead, you should use KPI to make sure that your recruitment is aligned with the company needs, right? Um, to give you an example, uh, at Oxo, we um, at Oxo, we do we're doing mid-month KPIs review, uh, not only to see if the, the, our employees or team is performing, um, but but it's to understand if our, our targeting is good and if what we're looking for makes sense on the market. So by doing that, we started to see our placement rate go up. Uh, because we're presenting to the hiring manager only the candidate that were aligned with what they were looking for, uh, and the team is spending less time in, in interview. So it's all a win-win for everyone. Um, by having a team that is that uses KPIs every week, you're going to help your cost per hire KPIs to go down because people are that are part of the interview interview process will have to invest less time in interviews. And you're also going to bring your quality of higher KPIs up because by constantly working on, on challenging and understanding your best uh, your best fit, people will be interviewing uh, people that will, will be interviewing with you will have a better cohesion with what you're looking for and with your company. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, you'll save a lot of money and a lot of time. And and for startups, that's that's a crucial aspect of it. So, yes, quality takes takes a little bit more time, but in a situation in our current market like we have right now, where Recruitment has slowed down for pretty much everyone uh, in the startup industry. Um, it's the right time to to train your team for quality, uh, and you'll see in the impact of it on the long run. And it would definitely make sense about that. Um, for this one, maybe uh, Pauline, you can uh, comment because you're the marketing specialist. But uh, you really need to show more than 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 your employer brand. Candidates are mostly looking for uh, a work culture uh, first, and especially now that tons of people are working remotely, uh, and, show, and showing how it is to work at your company is is crucial. Whether it's uh, let's say you're creating a video with team members sharing their experience, or you're adding a trial day to your interview process, uh, all of that will be beneficial to keeping potential candidates engaged with your company. Um, you also, as we mentioned uh, with Pauline, is that you're also going to be pushing forward a transparent culture. And also you're gonna gain a lot of insights on how to consistently evolve your work culture uh, with all the feedback you're gonna receive from, from the market. Um, and yes, we're back in a company in a company market, but candidates still have choices and you put so much passion, time and efforts when you work for startups that understanding the work culture before, uh, before and could reassure a tons of candidates on if they need to apply and if it fits with them. Um, so again, going back to talking about training your team and having a team of recruiter that is proactive in the market and that are gathering insights from the market will help um, because with them market, working with your marketing team, your marketing team will be able to build uh, a marketing uh, content that will allow you to share uh, what the, the candidate is looking for. Uh, and you're gonna be able after that to build an edge on the competition and push that edge with your marketing. I don't know, Pauline, if you know, uh, yeah, if you have a comment about that. Yeah. Amazing, per se. And, and lastly, um, my last point is, it's gonna be about technology. Um, it, and use technology to your advantage uh, and because technology will help you to do everything better. I've worked with tons of startup that didn't even add a, an ATS or a system to, to, to track your KPIs and things like that. And it's crucial to have that to answer the success of your recruitment, because if not, you're going to waste a lot of time. Uh, uh, we, uh, I talked about the KPI, the, the cost for hire, per hire, sorry. Uh, that's one that is really, really important. And adding the right tools, of course, is going to cost you a little bit more at the beginning, but will definitely have a, a bigger impact on your recruitment at the end. Um, I would say that the first thing I would do as a recruiter for uh, like for an, a startups is think about hiring tech savvy recruiters that are interested in, in process improvement and that wants to make the work more efficient. They will come up with great technology, new things to try and an idea that will help you uh, uh, be more productive with your, with your recruitment. Um, technology is having a huge impact also on 
everything recruitment. And we are in a really good market right now to try new tech and see how it can impact your team better. Um, a good recruitment tech stack would also pushes you to hire the recruiters who has the best soft skills for your needs. Because a good HR tech let recruiters focus on the human part of hiring. And as we mentioned, recruitment is a people business. So we need to have that kind of human part of, of hiring in, in mind when we do recruitment. So making sure that you have a solid tech stack is that, that is taking care of the rest is, is really, really crucial. Um, as mentioned, right, uh, it wouldn't be a, a webinar in 2023 if we didn't talk about AI. Um, and as an example, I, I, let's talk about ChatGPT, but I pushed my team to use ChatGPT since the first month it started uh, last year. And it, it helped us uh, to be more efficient by a lot. Whether it's automating text, creating job description, job ads, marketing, it's a really powerful tool that can bring you a lot. And by example, uh, we were talking about a, uh, a video uh, on how it is to work at the company, but you could take that the transcript of your video uh, that your team made, copy paste it in ChatGPT and ask him to create a some marketing content about the work culture at your company and to, by example, draft an intro to your job description uh, that let the applicant understand your culture right before applying. Um, that's pretty much it. So, and, and lastly, try to ensure to have a, the best HR stack for your needs and find a, a company like Factorial that understand their users and create a product that is helping you do better recruitment. Uh, and talking about Factorial, uh, I think, as you mentioned, we have a little demo uh, for you. Uh, now I have a question for you. Um, so with this buzz on AI and the talent acquisition yeah. industry, um, more and more articles are coming out uh, with the question as to if recruiters should be fearful um, if, you know, losing their jobs, uh, mm -hmm. like AI, uh, what would be your take on that question? Depends. It's a yes and no, right? It's uh, it, it's depend on how you adapt. Um, you know, you need to be an early adapter in everything. That's the reason why we're, we're trying to push AI at Oxo. Um, so, if you can adapt, be an early adapter, you're always gonna just be powered by AI. If you're waiting and you're not too sure and you don't wanna use it, um, well, first of all, people that, that are using it are gonna are gonna move faster than you, but also um, you're probably taking a chance that some companies are gonna create something that can definitely take your job, right? Um, and, and AI is always gonna give you an edge. So use it as, as soon as possible, try to understand it. Um, that's that's what's technology now, right? You need to be the join first on it. Be join exactly, forces join forces, forces with the technology. Let, let's uh, be friends with the machines. <laughs> Great, well, thank you. Um, all right, so yeah, we're, we're gonna jump into the factorial demo here where Paola will be talking about our recruiting technology um, the applicant tracking system. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Kevin. I, that was a great, incredible, informative meeting about recruitment in today's market as it's shifting so much. And so I totally agree. We need to focus more on definitely the quality and um, planting that brand seed. So the, the building that brand awareness on the company, especially in the startup world. And then also you're totally right. The new technologies, it's a perfect time to start using those and learn more about AI, especially as things in the recruitment space are maybe slowing down a little bit. It's definitely time to learn how to use these, implement these tech tools. So I'd love to show you a little bit more about Factorial's um, ATS platform. And I do apologize for my slightly, my voice is a little bit gone here. So I apologize there, guys. Uh, but let's jump in there. Mm. Let me quickly share my screen. All right, so we're in the factorial uh, ATS platform. So what really is an ATS tool? It's a software that can ha help you administer all these boring, time-consuming tasks that most people don't want to be doing uh, so that you can focus on the human part, which is what I think Kevin was saying. So focus on the human part of running uh, you know, a better recruitment process of better quality candidates and just engaging with your candidates a little bit more. <clears throat> so. The boring part is obviously posting that job description. So we can kind of take you through that. Um, the couple of steps there is that you're just able to click new job opening. You're able to input your job position, the workplace. So maybe we'll just do a typical job posting. Let's do, um, my, my demo is based off Dunder Mifflin. So I like to do assistant to the region and manager if you've ever watched the show. So in our case, uh, Dwight was fired and now we are hiring somebody else. 
uh, to be the assistant to the regional manager. We'll do the workplace Scranton and we can pick the team. He is a part of the sales team. And you, this is great where you can also show if candidates are on site, hybrid or remote. So we're really trying to position to all different types of job postings. In their case, they were on site. Um, and you can see that factorial is, uh, I'm not gonna take you through all the little steps because I know it was meant to be a quick five minute steps uh, demo, but I did wanna show a couple of really great features here where Factorial is implementing AI to simplify, um, or, or not even simplify, but to make things a little bit faster in terms of creating content. So you can quickly draft up, up a description for the job position. So uh, now instead of you going to a separate platform or like writing something on Word, you're able to create everything directly in Factorial. You can modify obviously things because you know Chat GPT is not perfect when it's coming up with uh, text base, but you can always can add your flair. This is where you come in with that creativity and that brand awareness, and this is where that's that comes in added. But the standard skills such as you know proficiency in MS Office that's already included in there and pretty much added by ChatGPT for you or factorial AI. Uh, then you have the applicant forms where again, you're able to select how you wanna receive different, uh, what different information you wanna receive from the candidates. So this is important when you want to get to know your candidate, you wanna know uh, their cover letter, you wanna know maybe their personal URL, maybe it's their socials, maybe it's their GitHub, whatever it may be. It's super important that we're able to provide this information and then you can add any addition applicant questions. What is fantastic about this afterwards is that it creates a beautiful landing page that will be linked to your, um, to your website that will look something like this. And this gets the candidates to learn a little bit more about the company when it's linked back to your page. They're able to go into what the benefits of the jobs are to learn more about the culture. And this helps you hire more quality candidates who are willing to spend a little bit longer to go through the process to actually learn a bit about your culture. And the quality is gonna improve because once they join the meetings, they already understand something about the company. Um, kind of diving back into it, what's great with Factorial's ATS is that we're able to also um, promote the job posting on over 100 job post uh, boards. So this is LinkedIn. This is, you know, Indeed, but all of that goes through Join. Join is a platform that we've partnered with that is able to recruit on a number of different job sites. The important part, though, is, is after this, you've done all this, you've cast the things and you've received candidates, all the candidates go into a candidate pool. And so you can have a division, the candidate pool, there's a candidate pool for obviously the actual position that you've applied for. Uh, and this is a way for you to see all your candidates in one place. Again, taking away all these administrative tasks of uh, trying to put everybody in an Excel sheet and figuring out where did they come from. And what's great is you're able to see the source. So after a while, you're able to also make informed data decisions as to which platforms you want to be posting your candidates, right? If you get a lot of amazing candidates from Hello Work, you're going to be posting most of your job postings from there. If you're seeing better candidates coming through Indeed, then that's where you're going to focus on as well. And so that allows you to make those um, informed decisions going forward. And then just simply we're able to go into each candidate, you're able to see their CV on the left hand side. So it's very easy to interact with your candidates also directly through messaging them just in the platform. Uh, you can also avoid the manual tasks by creating customized uh, letters saying thank you for applying uh, and just simply uh, move forward with discussing the can more having more informed discussions with your candidates and not spending time constantly writing the thank you for apply notes instead. Uh, you're also able to create tags. So this is a great way to categorize your, your uh, Canada pool, especially if you're looking to keep them, especially if, as I think Kevin gave a great example, he had somebody that he wasn't able to hire immediately, but after a couple of period of time, that candidate found a role for, uh, he was able to find a role for that candidate. And so it's super important to add these tags uh, so that you're able to then filter through your candidates going forward to know who might be a best fit for a role in the future, if, especially if they uh, didn't make it for this specific role. 
And Factorial is also, this is kind of the stage that I wanted to mention, Factorial is also going to implement AI going forward to help with candidate ranking and kind of go, filtering through the resumes. So again, help with these administrative tasks and kind of help you move forward and grow faster in uh, your recruitment processes, as well as kind of filtering out quality candidates. And this evaluation tool, I wanted to also show how different people can be working on one uh, one recruit. So maybe there's different, as I think Kevin was mentioning, you want to get your entire team to kind of on board in recruiting a candidate because that will usually make the quality of the candidate better, especially you want, you want the HR person, you want uh, somebody from the team, you want a couple of managers, you want a number of different opinions. And so it's great to have uh, the evaluation section here, have multiple people working on the recruitment process, and they can discuss and leave notes. So it's easy for everybody to keep track and see, is this candidate doing well? Is this candidate going to be the right fit for the role? Are they a cultural fit? Um, and so th this is a great way uh, to keep everything in one place within factorial. Um, just to be able to have an overview of how the recruitment process is going, the different phases, which we're able to also see here in the move phase. So we're able to see which phases the candidate's in. So in this case, we've sent this guy an offer, but you know we can also see if I move out here, different people are on different stages in the um, hiring process. And then we obviously have the Canada pool for everyone, for all your all your candidates, and this is where I was talking about that informed decisions, you're able to make decisions on our referrals working for your company. Is it better to have uh, people from hello work or wherever from, and what kind of skills are they possessing in the different types of sources that they come from as, with these tags? So maybe you find that people from Indeed are having they're more customer success or uh, success oriented. People from LinkedIn are more leadership oriented. And so you can make these informed decisions by having everything, by using technology. And um, yeah, Factorial can assist you with that. And I think I kind of ran through it super, super quickly. Uh, but if anybody has any questions, I'm always happy to answer those and kind of dive deeper into anything. Great. Thank you, Paula. Um, I think we have one uh, would the platform tell us where the applicants are from and would that impact if they're looking for a job abroad? Yes, yeah, so we are able to do that in the custom fields. So where I have built to ask the location of the custom fields and the impact on uh, hiring abroad, it would really depend on, again, we could ask if they require a visa in their region, uh, if the work is remote, and that's, again, up to the hiring managers and how they want to perceive this and the questions that they're asking during that um, can uh, during that initial stage when they're applying. Okay, great. I hope that answered your question. Um, all right, so we're opening up to the Q and A. Uh, we have. So I have a little part of the prediction about the uh, about what's coming out the things like that. So basically, I don't know if you want to start the Q and A now. Yeah. Yeah, so let's just talk about it to set up with the Q&A, yeah? Uh, you had a quote, right? Yeah, I had a quote. Basically, yeah. it, it comes along with that before the Q&A. Um, but basically, yeah, so just to end this, this, this the, the webinar about, about you know, the recruitment, um, I think that we're, and I want to talk about prediction. I think we are in a moment right now that it's really, really hard to predict because of, as we just saw the platform and things like that, the implementation of AI and technology um, is really changing the game right now. Um, so the startups that will come up winner in terms of recruitment are the ones that will make the best practices in habit and will always try to improve the way they, they do things. Um, the company will leverage more and more the recruitment team and give them the possibility to have a bigger impact in the company will definitely come up successful as well. And like the recruitment best, best practices, leverage, le leveraging tech and always improving will be needed because the market is moving so, so too fast that, as we mentioned, uh, you know, early that year will add the upgrade. So I know these predictions sound like things that we should be doing now and that's what's coming necessarily, but I think that the future is too hard to predict and that at the end of the day, I think that we uh, should kind of embrace the future by prepping for today it's not about getting ready, but it's about being ready for what lies ahead. Uh, so that's kind of, kind of some of the the what I was trying to talk about in the in in the webinar. 
great. I agree because things are changing way too quickly that, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard keeping up. Um, exactly. So predict how it's going to go. Um, and yeah, in fact, totally, we have a new product update like every week. So it's even That's like, like when you're working, exactly. yeah, even when you're working on the team, it's crazy to keep up. So if you're not even involved in the space and you're kind of just implementing the software, it's hard to keep up with it even more so than if you're a part of the team. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I have one question coming through on the ATS. Um, if a candidate has applied for position X and he is fit for position Y for any future possibility, would you recommend other any, any other position or something else? I think that they're put in the database. Um, yeah, they end up, uh, the candidates all come in and so they are filtered through like the position that they have applied to, but we also have the actual candidate pool, which is everybody who's applied for to any position and so again in the messaging you can message them through the candidate pool and you're able to tell them look i don't think you're a great fit for x but i think you're a great fit for y would you like to apply here and you're able to send them the application uh, or just move them you're actually able to manually move them into the application uh, to apply for position y and then take them through that hiring process there no applicant goes forgotten no no applicant goes forgotten there <laughs> All right. Um, well, there are no more questions. I'm putting our LinkedIn URLs in the chat along with um, the factorials URL. Um, if you want to navigate through our website, um, we have a 14-day free trial, or you could schedule a demo directly if you're if you're ready to to start with factorial today. Um, so that about wraps us up. Thank you, Kevin, so much for coming on here and it's talking pleasure. about your expertise, and Paolo for giving us that great demo. Um, on our software. Thank you, Pauline, for Thank having you, us. Pauline. Alrighty. Talk to you all soon. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.